unbelievable, unbelievable what what you will experience. Not just with your water, with your air. And and sometimes outside it is so bad. The, the absolute sulfur. That's all I can think of is from when I was in Texas around oil well. There, there's a smell in the air. A smell that I know from working from pool drilling company. You just know gas oil smell field. And sometimes it's it's pretty potent. You know, if you're outside for any length of time when it's when it's real heavy and going on around you, you'll come in and blow your nose and it's gray from what you're breathing. I look out there and see death. It's death. One, two, three, four, five, six, and this new one will be seven, and there's going to be six more. I could take you in a circle drive of two miles, and and that's just well. That's not the compression pads. That's not the staging areas. The smell. It smelled dusty and then the coloring of it and then for a lot when when it was really active it every day you would go in the bathroom and and look at the toilet it was like a pink jelly like jellyfish that's all i could think of as jellyfish in the ocean stuck to the side of the toilet and then when the jelly goes away there's other times it'll be just yellow and smells kind of like diesel fuel. You couldn't make coffee anymore. We, we started buying water right after that well because you couldn't even make a, a pot of coffee. It was, it was so greasy. The water wouldn't freeze in the ice maker. And when, when the what little bit of it did freeze, they were yellow and be completely hollow. And the stench, if you put them in a glass of water, when the ice melted, it was foamy, bubbly, and I do drink a lot of water, and, and so did my dog. We both were very ill. He, he did die from, he became a skeleton like I became at that point. That was a rough year. The summer of 2008 was a very rough year. So in consuming this water, you become so dehydrated, you can't drink enough. But at the same time, your body is rejecting it. You're throwing up. You, you have terrible dysentery until there's nothing left in you. But I remember them telling me at Geisinger, you are nothing but hamburger meat from your mouth to your rectum. I was just a bloody mess. So weak that I couldn't even crawl. Damn. My dog wrinkles. Yeah, he got sick on this water, and I knew it was the water. So, but it was, I had been so sick, and I wasn't here to make sure at that time he wasn't being fed this water, and after two weeks when I was back here at the house, he was just, he was a skeleton. He was 110 pounds down to a skeleton. The seizures were horrible. He. He threw up, he had diarrhea, he, he was my best friend. And that's how he died. My bird became sick. I never knew that a bird could get diarrhea. A little bird. And, and his feathers, I mean, they just were falling out. Mm -hmm. He's okay. Wrinkles, he was old, he, just, his, he was too old, I think, he couldn't. He just couldn't take it. It starts with terrible headaches and stomach cramps, and and they just don't go away. I mean, you just you can't keep anything in. I just know it was the water. I have not been sick like that since I quit the water. I'm down to one five-gallon jug. We go through five to six gallon, six five-gallon jugs of water a week just for drinking, and that's just two adults and a dog and a bird. I mean, 
yeah, they can tell me, tell us not to bathe or wash our clothes or anything, but, you know, this has been since 2008. I think we'd be pretty stinky by now. You know, they don't want you to bathe. They don't want you to irrigate. They don't want you to give it to animal. Uh, don't wash your clothes. What are you going to do? Like I said, if you, you, you use bleach, either your clothes will be yellow or they come out gray. I can take you downstairs where we have the filters in the that come in the house and take this magnet to the outside of that thick plastic filter and just suck the metal to the side of the plastic. It's scary. You just don't know what what it is. These cysts develop on you from the long-term use of this water. I don't know how else to explain it. You'd have to see some other people. Mine have been in my hair and on my face. Other people's arms are just nasty, cysty, crusty, especially ones that have their hands in water all the time, like working in a restaurant. It's for, I know it's from the water. There, there's no getting around it because when these cysts rupture, like when we have the pink jellyfied water, if you go to take a shower and they're open, it burns like gasoline. Like somebody has set you on fire because what's ever in this water burns, the, it just burns. An open sore will burn. The first one was huge. It hurt so bad. The headaches were unbelievable. I didn't know what was going on. And when that, was, it ruptured on its own and it just leaked, well, that's where it started and since then they just you never know when you're going to have a bout of them and they come right now i've been going through a bout of them but they've been in my eyes and then they actually travel down your body and then when your liver gets distended i know with me i can feel it i get the ulcerated sores here and then you'll have a problem i know i've had it with the belly button where it just it feels as if somebody is just drilling in there, just... <clears throat> it, it's a, a deep, not a bent, but it's a deep pain, and you can push, and I can feel this big rock in there. But, I mean, to go to the eye doctor for your regular annual checkup and find... Here, I thought it was because I was getting old. I couldn't see out of the right side of this side of my eye anymore. I figure I'm getting old, the skin hanging down. I go for my checkup and find out it's nerve damage. Severe nerve damage going on the optical nerve, and the top quarter part has lost its vision and part of the bottom. And what do you do? I mean, the last I heard from him was he wants to keep a check on this, but at the same time, it's going through my mind was it because of the big cyst that first developed on the top of my head and just travel? I had one that ruptured from the inside that just literally soaked a pillow and ruined a, a pillowcase this pink bloody liquid that drained out of my ears. My doctor's advice to us was for all of you people out there because she was sick of doing biopsies on all these people's cysts and all these sick kids and she was sick of it and I'm just telling all you people you need to file bankruptcy give your places back to the bank and walk away. I, I was so depressed after that visit because there's a gag order. They cannot talk to you about whether or not the problems that you're having are connected with drilling. There is a, a gag order in Pennsylvania with your doctors. So I had gone in there because of the CISPR. I never got to talk to her about myself. I heard about everybody else. So a few days later, I called the mortgage company. This is what's going on in our area. What do we do? We were advised to file bankruptcy. The response from the woman on the phone was that the property was not in that condition when you bought it. If you file bankruptcy without full disclosure, that they could come and take the full balance of that mortgage right then and there. Sue the man. Because this is not a viable asset. What do you do? What do you do? And you're sitting in a house that the federal government told you you cannot live in. And they won't even return phone calls. Since the day of the primary election, I'm getting ready to go vote, and I 
get the call from Region 3 and this is not a safe environment. You can't drink your water. You shouldn't even be bathing in it. Don't ingest it. Don't give it to animals. Don't irrigate. And that they won't even return a phone call. That's the last phone call you ever get. It's Region 3 EPA. Right after you get out of a shower, we can go get scanned. We're, we like tick. We're radioactive. <laughs> I don't know how it's supposed to go away. You know, you think about things like that and I think, oh, should I go to my little hairdresser and get my hair cut? You know, she's trying to have a baby. Am I like an x-ray machine sitting next to her? Yeah, the crazy things that go through my mind, like, am I going to hurt someone? I don't want anybody in this house, especially not a child. I mean, it, it, the, the radon level's too high. What, you know, they're telling me, you know, we don't need to worry about this. Is the mercury going to kill us first? But the radon is, is long term. You, you're exposing children and everything to these high levels of radon. 20.0. I know in the winter in this house, it, it's after being closed up, it gets real hard. But I don't know if it's the different gases that we're breathing coming up in the water since we do have such high uranium and mercury or, or really what it is. It, we just have a lot of health problems here that we're not even allowed to talk to with our doctors about. I could take tap water right now and try and give it to my dog and he will smell it and will not touch it. I don't know what he smells in it. I know sometimes it's pretty smelly. You know, it just, you know it's not right. It smells soured or something. I don't know. Sometimes it'll smell dusty. Sometimes it smells diesel-y. There are times in this house where it smells like, I just want to say the exhaust of a truck. I watch the bird. When it's really bad, the bird, he really lets you know. He gets panicky. He, he, he pants. It's hard for him to breathe. And that's when I know, okay, it's time to open up the windows because something isn't right right now. And the fire water. I mean, a lot of people, you know, think it's funny. But it's not funny to turn a spigot on and have it be on fire. You can go down to the river and people got huge towers on their wells to dissipate the methane. We've got a methane detector in this house now. So many people have had to put methane detectors in their home. If you come home and that light is flashing, you cannot even turn on a light switch. And we have a coal burner down here. It's a stoker, but there's a flame in there. This whole house cracked. I could take you in the basement and show you where they set the charge on the man's land over here. This whole house cracked through. <laughs> and this house was blasted out of solid rock. But it's cracked. And then when the, the problem happened with the septic tank and it overflowed, instead of going to the French drains, it went to where the crack developed in the corner of the basement through. I don't know how deep that is under there because it just, all this stuff sucked in this big old crack. I just kept pouring bleach in there thinking, how deep is the crack? Mm -hmm. I never filled it up with bleach or nothing. <laughs> I think, oh my God, I'm sitting on a big sinkhole now. Because I can take you down front and show you from the seismic activity. There was a big rock that sat down there and I... Always had a dream someday we're going to put a picnic area down there because that was a perfect place. That rock stands straight up out of the ground like this now. It has stood up. Now, we didn't pull that up there. <laughs> I want to know how deep is the, the hole that it's standing up and leaning into now. People are going to see a lot of problems. It's, it's not just going to be the health effects you're going to see the environmental effects, you're going to see your house is cracked. The increase in the crime here is unbelievable. The, the sexual predators that have come into this area and they're supposed to register, I mean, it, they don't. Oh, you wouldn't believe this store up here. I mean, the robberies, the B&B's the restaurant down there, 
over and over. South Montrose story, everything is, they just come in, they, you know, and, and my thing is, is where is all this crime coming from? And then they wanted to blame it on all the locals here, and I'm thinking, we didn't have this many problems before. I mean, one of the ladies went up for a cup of coffee one morning, and this guy comes around the store over there. She says, well, what are you doing? It's a lady I know. And she says, he said, what do you think I'm doing? As he grabbed her, put a knife to her throat, and drug her in the store with the other ladies to rob the store, as they're opening in the morning. Like there's a lot of money there in the morning. Yeah, there's been a, a lot more homes walked into. I, I know when they were all back through here last year, you never knew who was coming up the mountain. You didn't know if they were with the gas companies or who they were, to be honest with you. I don't even go down in our woods anymore. None of us ever even thought about locking our doors. That's the sad thing. You, know, we didn't, you don't think about that, but now you do. Because you don't know who's around anymore, who belongs where. Up here, we've always grown a lot of food. We have the two fields. And not just for us, but I would load up my Jeep and go up to the corner store and give it away. Anybody that needed food, I would take it to them. Even when these drillers started here, I would take them watermelons and cantaloupes and leave them at the gates at the well sites. For two years now, I've had no food because the last year, in 2010, when the, the fallout, the heavy oil fallout was so bad everything was just covered with this stuff greasy stuff the department of agriculture told us to wash it off with dawn dish detergent after a few days though sitting in the field everything got these weird ugly whole like soft spots they were they stunk just it was real oily and they just, everything disintegrated to the ground. I mean, just turn, I've never seen everything turn to jello like that and just disintegrate. The grapes, they, they just disintegrated. And then our cherry trees died out back. We lost, the first one we lost was the pollinator. They were loaded with cherries. I was so excited. I went out there with the five, the bushel basket and I, thinking, oh boy, I'm going to really have cherries. And I walked around there and looked at their, the trees. There wasn't a cherry or a leaf left. They were dead. They had died that, I mean, in a week's time, just died. We didn't have any, we haven't had any apples for two years. The grapevines did not come back at all this year. I, and they were old. I don't know what that stuff was that rained down on this place, but the food is no good. I just wanted to grow food and be left alone and yeah. live in a quiet place. Yeah. Quiet. It is, it is not quiet here. There was a time we could see the Milky Way. You don't see that anymore. I don't know what happened at that well and why all of a sudden it is dead silent. But to walk out there today, to listen to the quiet, I haven't heard quiet in so long. This was our dream, you know, just to be left alone, be quiet, and my dream is now I call the pit of hell.